I'm Mary Poplin with Forest Effects, and today I'm going to show you how to turn this into this using the new tools inside of Mocha Pro 2019. All right, so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my effect from the effects menu. I'm going to select effect and go to Mocha right here, Mocha Pro, and we're going to launch Mocha. I can hit start. And you can see we've loaded up Essentials mode. Essentials view is new inside of Mocha Pro 2019. I'm going to select my magnetic tool and I'm going to start drawing a shape right here around my rocks because we're going to try to roto these to hold them out from the background, which we're going to put actual color correction on. Now, when I get to the edge of this hand, I don't really have anything left to trace, so I'm going to click down and just draw a little freehand shape just like that. And now Mocha will take my magnetic tool and my freehand shapes and combine them into the spline. We're going to relax the curve on that just a little bit and I'm going to pull tight for corners where my rocks have corners just right here. Perfect. Now I'm going to call this rocks roto. I can either draw a big shape around all of my rocks or I can draw them all individually. I want to be a little bit lazy so I'm going to just draw it around the whole bulk of the rocks and just track the general motion that they have. If I needed to actually attach something to each rock, I would want to track them individually. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some shapes around my little hands here, just like this. And again, I click where I need freehand splines. So click and draw. Now let's adjust our spline a little bit because I made a little bit too many points. There we go. If I feel like that's still too many points, I can select my spline. I can select my magnetic tool and I can actually take my detail down or bring it back. I'm going to take my detail down and adjust my shape as necessary and soften my edges. Next we're going to draw a shape around the back hand here, just like that. I'm going to call this back hand roto. I'm going to call this front hand roto. And I'm going to drag back hand under my rocks and front hand because my hand is in front of my rocks and my backhand is actually behind everything. If we track in Roto from the foreground to the background, we'll always have holdout masks for everything we track moving down our layer order. I'm going to use the pan tool to move over here and grab my arms. I'm going to use my magnetic tool to draw a shape around my arms just like this. And I'm going to draw another shape around these arms here. I'm going to call this back arm. I'm going to call this front arm. And I'm going to drag both of these under everything. Again, my back arm is behind my front arm. And again, I can simplify these points if I like by using the detail. And we can smooth our shapes by relaxing on the handles just like this. For users who are more used to our old school view, this will be new. In our essentials mode, we actually have our track motion options right here next to layer properties. I'm going to use my gears on on every single layer so that I can track all of them at the same time and then I'm going to hit track forward and what Mocha will do is Mocha will track this through my scene. Now what I want you to notice is that my back hand is actually a separate shape than my front hand and that's because they're actually moving differently. When you track in Mocha you want to think about different planes of motion and then you want to follow those planes of motion by isolating them individually. I decided not to do that on my rocks because my rocks are more or less moving similarly. They're not all moving in individual ways. The tracking has been sped up so that you don't have to sit through tracking the shot. Please note the more pixels you are tracking and the more shapes you are tracking at the same time will slow down your tracking time. However, it's much better than tracking by hand. I want to point out real quick before I start correcting my roto, if you need the free hand tools and not the magnetic tools at all, you can just simply click on the free hand tools and click and draw. I like to use the magnetic tool instead because I can follow an edge where there's a crisp line and let Mocha do the work and then I can just click down with my mouse or my tablet and continue to draw in freehand. Now that my track is complete, what I want you to notice is that Mocha has followed the objects but it has not followed the edges. We only do edge snapping right now at your initial shape draw. So what we have to do is we have to correct the shape over time. We end up cutting our roto time in half by using about a third of the keyframes we would normally use. Now I can also use my transform toolbox right here to adjust 
either some pixels or all pixels at the same time. Let's go ahead and adjust the shape on this arm here. And let's adjust my hand shape as well. Let's correct our rock shape. And you can see I'm correcting this on the last frame. Now the reason I'm doing that, the reason I'm correcting my shape on the last frame is because I want to give Mocha the widest range to correct between and then I want to start defining the actual refinements from there. So we're giving ourselves the fewest keyframes to work with and then we are correcting over time. I'm going to speed up my shape corrections from here because if you've seen me correct one point you see me correct a hundred. Now I do want to show you one neat trick and that is I can switch to classic mode and I can use the auto quick stabilize mode and I can use that to keep my rocks in place and look for where the shape shifts off of them. And this is just a faster way to roto and it also illustrates that you can switch between views very very easily inside of Mocha. So for those of you that want to stay inside of the essentials mode you can but if you want access to more individual tools you can move to classic mode to do the same thing that I'm doing right now. And again I'm going to speed up my point correction because you don't need to really sit through that. Once I'm done I can switch back to essentials mode and look for any problems. So now I can do a couple of things. I can go to export tracking data or export shape data. I don't need the tracking data but I do need the shape data. So we're going to go to export shape data. You can see that Mocha Pro actually exports to just about everything but we're going to go to Mocha Shape Data for After Effects and we're going to use all visible layers and we're going to copy that to the clipboard. We will save our project and we will close Mocha. And we can go to Edit and we can go to Paste Mocha Mask. And that should be a pretty familiar workflow for everybody. However, what I want to point out is that with the plugin, we can actually go right in here into our mats and we can hit Create AE Masks. What Mocha will do is it will create AE masks from all of the masks that we had inside of our plugin. But also we can just apply the mat as well right here. And this will respect any edge feathering or motion blur that we added inside of Mocha, which we didn't. So I'm going to stick to create AE masks. Now that we have our mask applied, I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'm going to delete Mocha off of the background layer. And I'm going to get rid of my masks. Now I'm going to apply a sapphire effect. We're going to go to sapphire. And we're actually going to do S effect. So that's going to be under effect, sapphire builder, S effect. And we're going to build a effect. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to load a preset. This will start the preset browser. And one of the things I like about Sapphire is you can combine all of the effects into whole new effects. And that's what the builder does. So I'm going to look up a very good year. And this is what I want to apply to my background. But you can see that there are just hundreds of these filters in here. I'm going to go to my favorites and load a very good year. And now, because we've rotoed our foreground layer, we get to keep all that nice color, but keep a nice blue haze in the background. This is going to really help me make this look very graphic when I put my text over the top. And speaking of text, let's put our text in here. I'm going to put visit and we're going to change this font to a really fun font I found called KG Summer Sunshine. Let's make this like 200 pixels tall. I'm going to copy and paste this text or just duplicate it and drag it underneath Santa Monica and we're going to change this text to filled in and let's change this to 100 maybe 125 maybe 110 all right we're going to grab Santa Monica and pull it on top and we're going to take visit and Santa Monica and arrange them in our shot we're going to use our alignment to make these both left justified and line up. And I'm going to make sure I like where they are. I'm going to go back to my effects, Sapphire Builder, and S Effect. And I'm going to load a preset. Now there's all kinds of effects in here. So I will do a search inside of my effects preset browser 
for Brighton, and I like Brighton candles. And let's go ahead and load this, and we'll simply copy the effect and paste it onto our visit as well. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this, but the text doesn't move along with the hand, and I feel like that's jarring, especially because there's movement in the background too. So in order to solve this, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to track this text to the hand, and I'll show you how easy that is. So if I click on my layer that I have Mocha on and I launch Mocha, I've actually already tracked the hand because we've actually done Roto for the hand. So if I turn my surface tool on, I can see what that track looks like. So that's what my track looks like inside of Mocha. Now I wanna get that data outside of Mocha, so I need to translate it out to something After Effects can understand and that I can apply to text. So I'm going to go to Export Tracking Data. Now Mocha Pro can actually export to all kinds of things, After Effects, Autodesk, Avid Boris Effects, you know, Hit Film, Final Cut, Motion, Nuke, Quantel, Shake, etc. But what we want is After Effects Transform Data Position, Scale, and Rotation. We're going to copy that to the clipboard, we're going to save, and close Mocha. Inside of After Effects, I'm going to go to Layer, New, Null Object. I'm going to drag this down underneath my layer pile just for organization purposes, and I'm going to go to Edit, Paste. Now that Null will follow my hand. Now I have one more thing I want to do, because whenever you link text to a track, I'll just show you an example. If I take this text and I link it to my Null, and I can do the same thing, you can do the same thing by just using this drop down menu and hitting null 5. You can either pick whip it manually or use the drop down menu. But if I link this to my data with position, scale, and rotation, watch what happens. My text absolutely moves with my hand, but it looks weird because it's warping and rotating along with my tracking data. Because this is text, we want to see it justified. So we're going to go ahead and turn scale and rotation off. It'll delete all those keyframes. And now, Visit Santa Monica will move right along with my hands, but it won't rotate or warp. And so really quickly, that's how you can turn this shot into a more tracked text motion graphic shot like this. If I wanted, I could add any sort of text animation, and just so long as I linked it to the null, it would still move properly according to my hand track. So here's our before, and here's our after. I am Mary Poplin, and if you have any questions, you can find us on www.borisfx.com.